Hello everybody, once again this is G, and today I want to show you an automated food delivery setup. And this particular setup does not use space tech, so you can build it earlier on before you're getting into orbital sciences. And to keep everybody entertained, we've got a little 32-bit blinking lights going on in the background. Now this particular setup over here is based on a concept that was presented originally by Pierre Hugo, aka Avoided. I'll link his video in the description below, so make sure to check it out. But first I want to show you how this works. Let's have a look at this thing. We've got a little bit of automation and we've got a conveyor loader, sweeper, and a ration box behind the door. This is where food can get delivered by dupes or by other conveyors. And then it gets stored here in a vacuum. Everything here gets cooled by this layer of water down here. And that's pretty much it. Very simple setup down here. On the receiving end, we have a signal generator right here. So this generates a pulse if this plate is on and it gets on if it gets below 20 kilos so if this weight plate is low it's going to first of all open this vent over here for receiving and then it's going to send a green signal into this pulse generator it's going to send a pulse and this one is made of particularly memory toggle and a buffer now you can use a filter if you want but you want to use a buffer if you want to send a signal initially and then wait and if you wanted to wait first and then send a signal, you can use a filter. So in this case, using a buffer, we send a signal and then wait for 60 seconds. And this you can set to something else if you want. But we'll wait for 60 seconds to see if we're still green, as in we still want food. And if we're good, then it will just simply turn red and this will stop sending any more signals going forward. This signal then gets uh, sent along this bus. You can use a single wire over here. You do not need to use a ribbon if you don't want. But the ribbon here is to kind of future-proof the system because if you get some space tech, you can also build a setup where this is going to send a message back to the kitchen that says, hey, we're receiving food and so forth. Whereas in this case, you can kind of think of it as a UDP setup where it kind of sends it and then uh, doesn't receive a signal back versus, let's say, TCP where you, know, you have kind of a handshake going back and forth whereas we're receiving and so forth. So this guy doesn't know that anyone is receiving anything. So he's just going to keep sending it as long as pulses keep coming back. And here we have a buffer set for one second. This determines how much to send in any one given shot. So let's test this in action. Here we have a ration box that's going to simulate a dupe coming in and getting some food. And let's say we set this guy to get some food. There we go. So now he just got 20 kilos of food. This weight plate got a little bit light. It sent a pulse along this wire. And now we have some food coming in. In this case, we got barbecue. And the way that the, the way that loaders work is they always want to send 20 kilos at a time, if possible. And so that's why we have this whole 20 kilo theme going on here. Let's speed this along. So anyway, food's coming in. And it's going to get dropped onto this weight plate. And you see, it's coming in faster than this guy has a chance to expire. And that's, that's what I mean by, you know, you got to kind of set the time based on the length of your conveyor rail or kind of estimated delivery time. You do not want to expire this before the first batch of food comes in. So the food came in, this turned red, and no more signals will be sent. And then, again, if a dupe comes along and grabs some more food, let's say he's really hungry, he's going to get all the food. This is going to send a pulse once again, and more food is being sent. And it's going to wait until the next signal comes in. Food gets delivered. We're still green. So if we look here, it sends another pulse. This buffers it a little bit for one second and sends one packet of food. Here it comes. But that's probably still not enough. So we send another pulse in just a couple of seconds. Bam. More food comes along. This prevents any food from kind of rotting on the vine, so to speak. So, very efficient. And you can then, if you add filters using Space Tech, you can then filter and you can load other things on here besides food or different kinds of food or however you want to do it. And in this particular setup, if you're only doing food, you can kind of mix it up. You can have barbecue and burgers and, and whatever else you want. As long as it's all edible at the receiving end, it's all good. You can mix it up. Oh yeah, as for the blinking lights over here, we got a little snake going on. This whole thing here is powered by this contraption over here. You can see we got 
three beads of water going around in the loop and they're activating these element sensors. And as these get activated, they send signals through this whole contraption over here, which then gets put onto this bus. And you can see this automated ribbon over here, technically it should be only used for four signals, bit one, two, three, and four. However, you can actually go to 32 bits by stacking these things up. So these actually shift the bits across. So if you look at this, you know, it's set to bit number four, but what that actually means is add three, add three. And so if we set this to four, that actually means we take one and then plus three. And then you can stack that. You can also take another, you know, whatever the output of that is, and then plus three. So in this case, the input comes in from the bottom and it goes up. So in the case of this one, which is set to 32 bits, we begin with taking one, which is this wire right here, all these single wires are always one. And so you take bit number one and then plus three. I know it says four here, but what we're actually thinking is plus three. So we plus three and then we send this up the wire and then we plus three, plus three, you know, and so forth. You, you add these values up and you end up with 32 bits at the very end. Once you add up all these, all these values, you end up with 32 bits in the end. And then you send that on the wire. And again, you don't see this happening on this wire once it gets beyond four bits, but it still happens because there is no masking in the coding. I hope we can do something with this and maybe, you know, put it in the comments below what you think we can do with this. But yeah, you can really overload the crap out of this wire without actually breaking it, at least until this gets patched, maybe eventually or not. This has been Greasy Hammer. And if you like this video, then smash that like button and subscribe for more. And if you have any questions about this video, then post them in the comments below. I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.